Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Vertimax 5 podcast. My name is Al Merez. I'm going to be your host again here today. Being joined here by Brett Keen from Team Vertimax. We're going to be talking baseball. Hey, Brett. Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Pleasure to be on. Yeah, Brett's going to bring some insight into youth athletics. As always, he has young kids at the house just as I do. So uh, we thought it'd be great to bring him on today. And today we're going to be talking about, you know, effective and fun ways to train um, for youth baseball. We know both of us dealing with young kids, like the, the, the key, the secret to getting your young kids to, to do anything is to keep them engaged, keep them fun, keep things fun. Um, you know, their attention spans are, are super short. And so, you know, I, I'm dealing with, with youth baseball now. Brett's dealt with, with youth baseball as well. And so we both have seen a lot of different drills and a lot of different ways that various coaches have, have worked with, with the kids to, to get them better, right? You keep it fun and, and keep them oh, yeah. getting better. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so, you know, we're going to kind of hit on each aspect of baseball training, you know, what a typical practice may look like, um, and then different drills that we've seen and, and ways that coaches have, have kept it engaging for, for the kids. So let's go ahead and start up kind of where almost all practices start up, and that's with a, a warm-up or a dynamic warm-up. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just like you said, uh, you got to keep this fun, got to keep the kids engaged. Um, and typically how you do that, you know, you can't train the kids like you see, like the pros do before the baseball games on TV. You know, you got to get these kids in the group, get some fun games going. Um, you know, instead of just sitting there doing like some static stretches, you can implement a game of like some tag or some freeze tag, or, you know, even if you're out baseball, there's tons of field out there. You know, we've done some football before just to get the kids warmed up, moving, sprinting, moving in different directions, throwing the football, getting their arms warmed up. Uh, you can do some relay races. Um, you know, cones are a great tool to use when mm-hmm. you're any type of youth coach. So you can set up cones to put in some obstacles or, and some mini hurdles really just want to get the kids moving around, make it fun, make a game, even have them come up with some games if you want, but proper warm up, I would say for youth is you got to keep it fun, keep them engaged for sure. Yeah. You know, baseball, you don't, a lot of times you don't get a chance to kind of run around and do side to, you know, side change of direction right. drills and stuff like that in the typical game of baseball. So any of those kind of games like football, I know our kids like to play that Superman tag, sharks, yep. sl- sharks and minnows kind of depending on where you're at, what, how you call it. But those are fun games to, to kind of get the get the juices going. Oh yeah. yeah. All right, cool. So then moving on, let's go to like hitting. So what are some different kind of hitting drills that you've seen or hitting practice? Yeah, yeah, and rolling with the same theme. You want to keep this just like with their warm up. Um, you know, these are youth athletes, so you want to try to keep it fun. Um, another a way to really kind of keep it fun and competitive is kind of give the kids some targets. So, for instance, if you're setting up like maybe some hitting practice on the field, you can put some. You know, you can put some zones out there or say, you know, I want you to hit this to the left field. Uh, This one needs to be hit in the air to left field or try to take it to opposite field. Give your kids some, you know, some targets to hit after instead of just saying, let's just swing away. Um, You can bring some fun into it. You know, I've I've done hitting drills where you brought in the mini wiffle balls and try to trick the kids, throw them fast, try to throw it by them, see who you can strike out. Um, Make it fun. We do stuff like that. Even wiffle ball. We've done wiffle ball practices before where we just were swinging away at the wiffle balls, maybe doing some mini home run derby, um, some other things just to keep it fun. I've had parents first kids games before, too, to help bring the parents out and keep them engaged yeah. with the kids. Um, just some great ways just to, you know, keep the kids engaged, make it fun, even make it fun for the parents when they come out as well. For sure. It's about, you know, the, at that age, it's a job of hand eye contact, you know, contact and watch oh, that yeah. ball, seeing the ball and swinging hard. And you can, you know, trick them into different ways to, to make that happen. For sure. Weighted balls are good to, to mix in there. I know oh, yeah. I, I, yep. last night we were working with some weighted balls. You mentioned wiffle balls. Like we had that, the skinny bat, the kids were hitting the little wiffle balls. Oh, yeah, like the skinny bat. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So different things you can do. All right, another aspect of baseball is is running, right? So base running, what are some ways you've seen? Yeah, base running is pretty huge for baseball. You know, a lot of times when you're playing, you know, you'll have kids that kind of don't, you know, you'll get in situations where they don't know what to do. So you have the coach screaming at them, telling them, go back, go back, go back. Um, So you can make this a little fun as well. Um, You know, competition does bring some fun to the aspect of it. So you can always put some competition in there. 
set up some timers, time the kids running from first to second or second to third, or, you know, you can make the stations um, as we've done before, where you'll make a kid, all right, balls hit. I just want you to run through first. That's it. So, you know, they'll run as fast as they can through first. So you can see who gets there the fastest. Um, then you can make it into a little bit of another station, like at second and third, where they're sliding into second, or maybe they're rounding second, stopping half a little bit, going back. Um, it's fun to put the decision making in there too. Um, we've done some drills where, you know, the, the coach will hit the ball into the outfield, kind of into the gap, and we'll have the kid run. And then we'll have coaches on the bases and tell the kids what to do, whether they're, hey, go to second, go to second, or get back, get back, get back. Yeah. Um, just kind of game time simulation situations, but it's also fun for the kids because, you know, you got your teammates still in the ball. They're trying to get the kid out that's on their team. Um, it, it does bring some laughs and bring some fun and competition for the kids as well. For sure. Yeah, my uh, my six-year-old's playing and, and – almost every end of the practice is a relay race. So a coach takes splits up teams, takes half the kids to home base, takes half the kids to second base and they have a ball and they run the bases and then they hand the ball off to their teammate. And it's a race to see, you know, which team wins. And that's like their funnest part of the practice is that. Relay oh, yeah. race at the very end. That's awesome. Um, all right. So, and then, kind of wrap this up with fielding and, and different fun aspects of, of games that you can do for fielding. Yeah. For fielding, um, I've done, I've brought hula hoops out before and hung them from the fence and have kids set up targets, try to hit through the hula hoop, see who can hit the most out of like 10 throws and put yeah. that at different distances and angles, um, which are some good, you know, pretty drills. Like I said, you always want to keep it fun, keep the competition. If the kids are kind of just out there just going through the motions and not really un wondering you know, like the why they're doing it and everything like that. And they don't have a specific target or goal to meet kind of gets boring for them. But when you add some like hula hoops or, you know, you put some nets, like we have drills where put the net at like home plate and get the outfielders thrown in the ball and see who can throw it in the closest to the net, whether it's bouncing in or whether it's hitting in or rolling in, uh, just give the kids some targets to hit um, when they're doing their fielding and throwing. And um, same with catching. Um, we've had opposite cones. What I like to do is, you know, we'll put cones in like left center and the cones in right center and have two lines and we'll throw the ball in the middle um, and have the kids run to the ball and practice their call offs and practice yeah. their fielding. Sometimes we'll make it into like almost like a football throw or we'll throw it over there and they have to play wide receiver, um, make them go get the ball, make them run fast, catch it over their head, catch it, you know, in all different ways. Um, make it fun, interesting, challenging. Um, but it does keep the kids, you know, as active as possible for sure. Yeah, it's all great ways to work on like pursuit angles and angles to the ball, okay. making sure you're on the right line, and that's all good stuff. Yep. All right. Well, I appreciate you, Brett, um, filling us in a little bit of those drills that you've seen along the way. Um, oh, yeah. Thank you all for for sticking around and and joining us and and hearing what we had to say. If you're looking for some additional baseball information, you know, feel free to. To browse around on the website, we have some blog posts where we've talked about um, you know, these drills and more, as well as on the Vertimax app. You can find a lot of baseball drills. So thank you once again. Thank you, Brett. Absolutely. You go out and have a great day, everyone. Thank you.